because I feel like maybe the time is now that we need to be thinking about getting uh, more of this into our control. That might seem radical for some. If it seems radical though, you're not paying attention. I would assume that most of you listening to this channel is like, oh yeah, we start to not, we're not feeling as good about the food supply as we were before. So we went from farm to frying pan. That's good. Hey Bryce, come and try some YouTube. Yeah, Kevin. I already have. Reaction video. Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to get out of there. We're going to freeze right. Get out of there. Okay, we're at the end of a very busy day, but check that out. We have five trays in here ready to pre-freeze for the freeze dryer. Welcome back to the homestead. All right, today we're doing a warning. I'm going there, a warning on our food supply. <laughs> so you've probably seen a lot of stuff in the news about injecting certain things, not just into meats, but also into vegetables. Um, I just got a, a message from somebody that went to their Walmart. They bought some mayonnaise. And all of a sudden, people are seeing this uh, made with bioengineered products. Gosh dang it, guys. That just ticks me off big time. So today, what we're going to do, we're going to do something about it. Because we don't live in fear. But the time is probably now that we've got to take a little bit more of this back into our own hands. So today, we're going out to the rabbit colony. You know how in the last video I told you I did not have enough time for meat rabbits? I don't. I've been over uh, trimming my house, uh, my rental house, so that we can get the painters in there. And I really want to get over to the Rock Manor, but I don't get to do any of that because I got to go over. We've got 30 rabbits that we were just going to sell to the meat truck. But my wife rightfully said, why are we doing that? The whole reason we're doing it is for the future day that we don't trust the meat sources. Well, I think we might be pretty close or at least closer to that day than we realize. So we're going to take the 30 rabbits, we're going to do the butcher, and then we're going to cut them up, we're going to cook them, and we're going to freeze dry them. So little freeze dry chunks of, of protein that we know exactly where they came from. They were not bioengineered, they were grown right here on our homestead. But the main thing for those of you that don't have meat rabbits, um, I just want you to get thinking about things you could do in your homestead so that you can take a little bit more control, a lot more control out of the hands of people. They're just idiots. They just keep screwing around with stuff. I mean, I love chicken. I love steak. Like, I'm not a guy that just is like living completely off grid. I mean, I, I want to get there but I'm not there. And so it kind of ticks me off that, that I'm having to waste my day because I feel like maybe the time is now that we need to be thinking about getting uh, more of this into our control. That might seem radical for some. If it seems radical though, you're not paying attention. I would assume that most of you listening to this channel is like, oh yeah, we start to not, we're not feeling as good about the food supply as we were before. So, you know, the nice thing with the greenhouse, same thing. And, and with your um, gardens, with your canning stuff, with your hoop houses, everything that you're growing on your own, your own fruit trees, um, you know if you do or do not have preservatives in them. You know if you've used synthetics and, and all sorts of weird crap for it. So you're aware. And the thing is, is even if things were labeled honestly, if I knew what the, what was and was not a part of all this, maybe I wouldn't have all the trust issues I do. But when they just say made with bioengineered products, what does that even mean? It's absolutely ridiculous. It ticks me off. <laughs> so instead of getting mad, I'm just going to spend a couple of hours and harvesting the fruits of our labors. Now guys, I get it. Rabbits are cute. I get it. They're cute. How could you eat rabbits? You know what though? If I was a chicken lover, how can you eat chickens? Like, let's say that I had a comfort chicken, <laughs> okay? I rented from you and I got a, a waiver to have my comfort chicken in my trailer. 
And I love that little chicken. It's so cute. Kept me comfortable. And then I find out that you guys eat a Chick-fil-A, you evil people. <laughs> you know what I mean? What I'm trying to get at is the fact that rabbits are kind of like a faux pas. Like they're uh, almost like, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. That's uh, really radical. That's homestead prepper stuff. <laughs> is it? <laughs> it's really absolutely no different. Now, I say that, but I don't eat a lot of rabbit. Like we, we grow these for the future knowledge that we feel like we will need. I'm a little bit ticked because I'm feeling like we're getting closer to that day to when we need to start harvesting these. Hence, I'm doing that. Most of us don't harvest our own chickens, let alone our own deer, our own elk, um, our own cows, our own sheep. But plenty of us will have a leg of lamb, a ribeye, sirloin. I had one of those the other day. And we don't think twice about it because we have detached ourselves. We have cut the cord between the food that we eat and the production um, uh, of, of our own efforts because we don't do it. We live in a modern society. I don't want to say we're lazy. I will say that we're really busy. We're really affluent. Even if we're poor, we're affluent. We're eating better than 99% of the world. People in other countries, they would gladly take a rabbit. It would be a delicacy. The funny thing is, is these New Zealand rabbits are actually a delicacy here in America. So when I sell them to the meat truck, guess where they go? They go to high-end restaurants and high-end luxury cruise lines where people gladly pay lots of money to eat rabbit, you know? And they do so with a, a nice frock and a nice uh, tuxedo on and so it doesn't seem so barbaric, you know? Sorry, I don't know what that <laughs> accent was. I do want to issue a warning though, pay attention. So I'll, I'll try to put some, embed some videos uh, or some images of mayonnaise and these other products that, that have the bioengineered products. I don't know what all that means, but it just, I don't know. Guys, it's time to like, if we stop buying those products, then maybe they will stop changing their recipes and stop doing this because life is so good. I love to eat food. I love to eat out and it's just getting a little bit more risky. Tell me your thoughts below. Okay, now I'm gonna show you just barely little. I won't show you the, the killing of the rabbits, but I will say this, I am kind hearted. Like, okay, you hardcore homesteaders, you might make fun of me now, <laughs> that's okay. But I don't, I don't like doing this. I always paid to have Devin to do this. I paid him two bucks a rabbit and he would butcher them and skin them for me. Um, I do it in a, a way that is the most humane possible um, because I don't want them suffering at all. I'll, it's quick. Um, I'll, but I learned from a professional um, lady, she, she, had, she would sell thousands and thousands of rabbits on a monthly basis to California. Uh, she's no longer alive, but she was an expert and she showed me how to do it the most humane way possible. I guarantee the food, if you're eating any protein, I guarantee you, that it's not done more humanely than the way that I do it. Promise you that, it's, it's immediate. So I still feel there's this humility that comes from it. You know what? I think if we had a little bit more food, uh, humility in our food, we all probably wouldn't have this massive obesity problem. Uh, we probably would all be just a ton more healthy because we, we wouldn't have the waste problem. You know what I mean? We, we waste gross amounts of food at our house. We're trying not to, but we do. I'll tell you one thing, since Becca has started uh, with her milk cow for the last year, <clears throat> we waste a whole lot less milk. I mean, if you have milk at the uh, bottom of your cereal bowl, I mean, it's like one of the unpardonable sins. Why? Because Becca had to sit there and pull and pull and pull those udders, <laughs> you know, to get uh, milk from Splash. So it brings some humility to your food. I think that a lot of the humility that comes from me being a kind-hearted person, not necessarily enjoying the the slaughtering of cute white rabbits. Um, I think that humility part, the bringing you a little bit closer to nature. I know this sounds really strange. I'm not a I'm not a tree hugger, guys. <laughs> but I think it I think it's a good thing. I do. Put in the comments if you think I'm weird or if you think I'm onto something. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, the first thing is maybe, I want to go on. Okay. 
too easy. Bryce is on catching. Bryce, you go ahead and catch one and get it over here. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Hey, uh, Keisha, you need to go in the house real quick. Just, so, all right. Keisha, go inside. <laughs> okay, run inside real quick, Keisha. Let's go ahead and... Okay. Okay, I am going to show you the method I use to the most humanely way possible butcher the rabbit, so to, to kill the rabbit. And then also I'm going to show images of me skinning a rabbit. So I just want to tell you that now, if that's something you don't want to see, you're welcome to skip maybe the next uh, seven minutes of the video or just catch me on the next video. I don't want to, I don't want to surprise you. I don't think there's anything wrong with it whatsoever. But if it's not something you're interested in, uh, like I say, we can just catch you on the next video. So when done right, the bunny does not even squeal at all because it's immediately dead. So if their head is turned at like a 45, 30 degree angle upwards, which it will be when, when this is on it, and then by grabbing the legs and pulling up, it's immediately dead. It's immediately severed, no pain. That's the goal here. Okay, and then the other thing is we get things in a clean manner. So we want the meat away from here. This we're gonna save the organs. Bryce, go get me a bucket. bucket. Yep. Okay, Jill, you're gonna learn how to do this. We're gonna use the carver. You can even grab that big black bucket there. Okay. So we just start right up here. Just pull the skin out and just work around all the way around the side. I'm going to zoom in on that. Sure. Just work it around, work it around. Now I might be a little bit rusty because again, I paid Devin to do this. And then I just come down here. Now there's going to be other homesteaders that's going to be better at this than me i will admit what you're getting here is a regular dude he's a banker w2 earner <laughs> probably not the the normal demographic of somebody who would even be in the weeds of doing their own protein their own uh, meat production isn't that the point we all kind of want to get to a better place a place of more self-reliance not mcdonald's reliance Oh, Nate, that makes so much sense when you say it. Okay. So, so we get down here, and then we got to cut down into the crotch area. And, okay, see how that's created a separation? That's what we want. And then you just kind of scan, scan, scan. Scan, scan, scan. To be honest with you, this is going better than I no normally do it. <laughs> so, I must be a true TV star. Okay, I'm trying to remind myself, at this point, the main thing is you do not want any of that rabbit urine, the guts, to get on the meat. So, so you kind of cut back there. We're getting ready to kind of cut around the back side here. Okay, so we've pretty much got that all cut out and reamed out. So I like to just get the, the scissors. These are not my favorite scissors. Yeah, they've got a little part here that captures that the bone from the tail. Just go in there and just cut that off. Okay, then at this point, we've done pretty much all of the heavy lifting, all the nasty stuff. No, this looks filthy. Ew. So in there, careful not to get it all over you. Yeah. So we want, the one thing I like to do is where the, there's the, I just want to make sure we don't have any, so, so see that right there? Trevor yeah that's pee we do not want any of that anywhere near any of our meat so you kind of pinch it take your time and just kind of get things so they're cutting out of there 
And then if we do it right, you actually pull. Okay, and see how that none of that poop got up top? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're gonna cut these side straps off. Ooh. Yep, none of that's touching me, none of that's touching our meat. All right. Now you can eat probably some of those strappy stuff, but we're gonna feed them to the chickens. Okay, so then at this point, all the guts are gone. We've got, I think they're the lungs. All right, now all the guts are gone. And if we just pull down, it's going to pull the um, down over the arms and you'll notice that we don't have any head. So we got to ask Becca if she uses the any of that for meat, but I'm just going to clip it for now until I ask her. And then the cool thing is that when we send this into the house, it is just nothing but, so try to go where the joint's at. Let me find the joint. That's a little high. There's the lucky rabbit's feet. Not lucky for him. Okay, so at this point, that is just, this one was a little younger, then maybe it, it could have been a little older. So then we like to just put it not in cold water. This is what how how flow taught me you just put that right in metal so we'll take that in becca will cut it up it's cooling off and then repeat okay so um we'll we'll cut that out for now guts in one place protein in the other baby okay so Joe, you got it find the um Oh, let me borrow that again real quick. I gotta get my... Okay. And this one's ready for mama. Goes right into the clean bowl. Looks like a piece of chicken. Tastes like chicken too. Pretty dang good for your first one, dude. Uh, he okay, we've got jelly finishing up. Bryce is uh, trying to catch the last one. And I am just about ready to go in and deliver one of the last ones to Mrs. Homestead. So now I want to show you from the backyard butcher shop into home production. So once we pass this off to Becca, um, you'll see the feminine side of our operation. All right. Okay, Miss Becca, you're on film. So when I bring them into to Becca, they are clean. All of the other stuff is out of there. And she takes over, so can I move? <laughs> so I just like to wash it anyways and just, just make sure it's nice and clean, just like you do with chicken that you get from the store. And then um, I'll show you how I cut it up. So um, as far as if you're if you were cutting up a chicken right now uh -huh. and a rabbit, I mean really what's the difference to you? Uh, well, I don't really know. I don't do anything proper. I just. I mean, as far as your sensibilities. Oh. Do you yeah, feel any no, different it, it at this point? It's the same. Yeah. It's like it's meat, but 
It was just humbling because they know what it was. And... So it's still humbling, but the boys, us men out there, we're trying to shield her from some of that. Um, so that when she gets it, I think it's pretty, pretty much like, you know, if she were to buy a box of chickens. Okay, so walk us through it. Okay, so, okay, come on here. See this leg? I just go around that whole leg like that. So that's what I'm doing. I'm cutting around this. Do you want to just turn it off for a sec? So I go around, around that the best I can. But again, I'm not a perfectionist, and the reason is because I just get what meat I can, and then it doesn't go to waste because we just make soup out of the rest. So we leave a little meat for that, so it's fine. But then you just kind of peel this off, kind of like you'd peel a banana. You can do it in like several little peelings, or if you can try and get the whole thing all at once, you can... Just kind of peel the whole thing right down the leg like that. And you get yourself a nice little slab of meat at the end of it. And poor Keisha, she's trying to figure out what's going on. Hey, Keisha. <laughs> Do you want to say hi? Mama. What, sweetie pie? Mom, I need the new, my new nails are so cool. So here's the size of meat we get here. So that's from just one, just the thigh. And so when you, uh, well, maybe what we'll do is we'll make a, finish a video of us cutting up and frying it up. So. Yeah, yeah. So we fry that up or we just use it in place of chicken in our recipes. Okay. And then just show me okay. roughly. So that's where most of your meat comes from. And then yeah. where and then else also, is your... Okay. So I also do this cut. So this is right in the mid section and go right up here. Um... In a long. Mom. Mom. Yes, sweetie pie. So there's My this little slab Mom. of meat. Um. And then I, I also can, you can if you want, or you can leave this for the soup if you want. But I just get that little nugget right there too. So. Right on. Well, I think that's good. Keisha, we'll let we'll let you get mom back. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Homestead. We'll be back for the cooking and the freeze drying. Okay, we're back with Mrs. Homestead, and we're now down to the final stage. Have you already cooked some? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, you so, want to move it a little bit away. I don't like the crack in the camera. So we went from farm to frying pan. That's good. <laughs> hey, Bryce, come and try some. You too? Yeah, Kevin? I already yeah. have. Now. Reaction video. Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to look at it. Oh, get out of there. We're going to freeze right. Get out of there. McKenna, try it. <laughs> Well, you're just going to have to believe me and Bryce. It's delicious. All right. No video is complete without official taste testers. So I have brought three of the best, the world's best taste testers. That would be Sienna, Alyssa, and Keisha. Okay, Keisha, you're first. Keisha. And she's my opinion. Oh, I tried that before. You've had it before? A long ago. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, there's one down. Keisha chose mine. Yay! There's not a better endorsement than that. Okay. Okay, Sienna, try one, bud. Sienna doesn't really eat. She'll try one. Sienna. Sienna. Okay, I'll try one. Okay, come here. Open it for her. Sorry, that's really I'm going to have a bite of it. Keisha's on number three. <laughs> wow. Girls. I can see Sienna's approval. Do you guys double dare? Okay. There's 
so good. It's good. It's, it's good. good? So you're a little hesitant to try it. How come? You can be honest. Just because it was... <laughs> yeah, it was rabbit. Rabbit. <laughs> but then after trying it, if we just told you it was chicken, what would you think? I just eat it. It's like really good chicken, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you girls are awesome. Thank you. Becca, you did well. Thank you. More to come. What's that? Another one. You already had like four. Well, I want to move. You can't fake that, friends. You cannot fake that. Okay, we're at the end of a very busy day, but check that out. We have five trays in here ready to pre-freeze for the freeze dryer. So five trays, we figure um, in the situation that we'd be using this, these, this would be about 10 mils. So we got enough protein for 10 mils, which is a pretty good effort. And the meat and the quality is absolutely fantastic. Next step, freeze dryer, and then we can seal them up. Okay, the rabbit meat is then from the farm to the freezer. And now we're putting it in the freeze dryer. Okay. Lock it in and turn it on. Load it up, close the valve. Don't forget this part. away the rabbit meat is done so what we want to do is pull it out and make sure it's all the way dry so we're gonna get a nice chunky piece that one's pretty good chunky and we're gonna taste test it oh yeah it is completely dry no moisture left in there so then we're gonna fill it in the bag. So, that's the final step. Put it in the bag, put an oxygen absorber in, seal it off right here, and then we'll have meat that lasts for 25 years, apparently. And it's good. Okay, we put the meat in each one of these. Now we're gonna put an oxygen absorber inside. Each one gets one. And then we will seal them. And now the sealing step is done like so. Wait for that red light to go off and sealed up. I we usually do it twice. There you have it. Other than that, do whatever you need to do on your homestead to take a little bit more control into your own hands. I hope from the first of the video with the rant that I created a little bit of a need that we've got to just get things in order and we've got to start taking things into our own control. And we can do it. And if you're prepared, you shall not fear. See you in the next video. Okay, so it's the end of a long day where I had to finish all the trim on the pink cottage. And then we had the rabbits, but this is what I've been wanting to do all day. So even though I've got literally 10 minutes of light, <laughs> look what I've done so far. So I told Canada to video me. This is on the east side of the manor. The stone's coming off awesome. <laughs> lots of remnants of the old original mortar. I know some people are like, wait, wasn't it supposed to have been uh, plastered at some point? Um, this would have been rock with uh, the, the original mortar 
Probably only for a few years though, because this guy was a big plaster guy. But we are definitely restoring it to that original first year, year or two with the mortar. We're gonna show off every stone, baby. Oh, jeez, I just about hit you, Kenna. <laughs> oh, sorry. I do not even know what I'm looking at here, but that is so cute. 